Welcome to tonight's presentation, which is a subject that I find absolutely fascinating, even though it's over 44 years old. It is the hidden occult and satanic message contained inside the lyrics of Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven came out in 1971 on Led Zeppelin 4, as many of you will remember and know. And it's very simply the most popular and the most played song in the history of rock and roll. It became the anthem of rock and roll. You remember the beautiful lyrics, the acoustic guitar work, the electric guitar work, and it was really, it blazed a new trail in rock. But tonight we're going to look very specifically about what message was contained in the song with a strange title, The Stairway to Heaven, a, a woman who is climbing the stairway to heaven. Well, just before we get specifically into the lyrics, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that both Jimmy Page, the lead guitarist of Led Zeppelin that played on Gibson Les Paul here very famously, um, and that Slash, in fact, more or less copied, for those of you that are interested in terms of sound. He was the first one to get that sound out of Les Paul. He was heavily into occult matters. He had a bookshop called Equinox that was the largest occult bookshop in Europe. Um, he bought Aleister Crowley's house in Scotland. Aleister Crowley was an infamous and very scary black magician that a lot of people in the rock world, for some reason, were very interested in. And he advised people to be able to write and read backwards, which was a strange piece of advice or admonition. But we'll see, in fact, that it ties in very directly with the backwards messages that people started putting in music. Robert Plant, that actually wrote the lyrics to Stairway to Heaven, although he did so in conjunction with Jimmy Page, he said that the message in Stairway to Heaven was the quintessential and most important message that Led Zeppelin had to communicate with its public, and that it was the zenith of their career. So you can see that they themselves placed great stake and importance in this particular song. So now we're going to look in detail at the lyrics. And I think that many of you are going to be surprised. Why are you going to be surprised? Because you've heard it hundreds or maybe thousands of times on the radio. And I'm willing to bet, if you stop the tape right now, that you don't have a very good idea of what it's about. You might say it's something about a woman um, trying to climb or buy the stairway to heaven. It's about something mystical. Maybe it's related to something to do with Tolkien's writings. Yeah, I think Led Zeppelin were into matters mystical. You saw them riding around on horses in the mist with swords, and they did all of these rather, um, these rather funny uh, fairy story type of videos that all seemed very innocent. But now let's look at the song, and I think you're going to find that it's a little less innocent than you might have thought. So, there's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. Well, here they're mocking Christianity and the conventional belief. Um, and they're saying you can't buy your way into heaven the way the church operates by asking for donations and by milking people for money. And all that glitters is not gold. So what you think is a sure value is not. Things are not what they appear. So they announce very clearly what's going to become very important in the rest of the song. When she gets there, she knows if the stores are all closed, with a word she can get what she came for. Again, they're mocking this belief that through prayer, that maybe some people see as empty prayer, or prayers in Latin, or mere words, that people can gain their salvation. But they're introducing the key theme now, which is going to take over in the song. And, and that is that words can have a magic power. The words of a song, or words, for example, in a black magic ceremony, where you say a word and a door opens, or an evil spirit is conjured up. And saying key words is, is very key in Satanist beliefs, that if you say specific words, they have a magic power. So, with a word, she can get what she came for. So what did she come for, and what are the words she's going to use? Ooh, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. Well, there's a sign on the wall, but she wants to be sure, because you know sometimes words have two meanings. Now pay very careful attention here because you know sometimes words have two meanings. At this point, they're very explicitly drawing your attention to the fact that if you turn the CD or the record backwards, back in the old days, there's a backwards masking message. That means a message that when the record is played backwards, all of a sudden you hear words. And it clearly says, Oh my sweet Satan, you are the way. So here, 
they're not bidding around the bush anymore. They're telling you specifically to turn the record backwards and that there's a message. So it's starting to get pretty sinister. In a tree by a brook, there's a songbird who sings. Sometimes all of our thoughts can be misgiven. Ooh, and it makes me wonder, and it makes me wonder. Well, the songbird singing, traditionally, in the Middle Ages, was a symbol of the messenger of Satan. And here they're cleverly weaving together different themes. Song, the message of Satan. And they're wondering, it makes me wonder. So they're perplexed. They're wondering about something. And it's starting to sound like there's a strange quest that they're going on, and they're inviting the, the listeners, the people hearing the record, to come on. There's a feeling I get when I look to the West and my spirit is crying for leaving. Christianity came from the East originally, the Middle East to be precise, as you know. Well, when they turn towards the West on a, quick, a spiritual quest, they're turning their back on Christianity. So that really speaks for itself. And their spirit is crying for leaving. They're yearning for something else whilst turning their back on Christianity. In my thoughts I have seen rings of smoke through the trees and the voices of those who stand looking. Rings of smoke come from circular fires that during the full moon ceremonies, Satanists do in the woods, and they try to conjure up the spirit of the devil, or they succeed according to what you believe in. So here there's an explicit reference to conjuring up the devil. And the voices of those who standing are standing are the disciples of Satan who participate in these rituals. And then they go on, but with more insistence. Ooh, it makes me wonder. Oh, it really makes me wonder. So the questioning, the deep existential questioning, is becoming more and more insistent here. And it's whispered that soon, if we all call the tune, then the piper will lead us to reason. The piper comes from Greek mythology that you might know. And he was referred to in the Middle Ages as Pan. And who was Pan? Pan was an impersonation or an incarnation of Satan because the bottom part of his body was a goat, which in iconography, if you look, is a representation of the devil. And Pan the Piper would lure people with his magic music, playing his, his flutes or his pan pipes, and he would beguile you with music, and he would befuddle the mind, and people would follow him in a trance. So here it's very clever because we're listening to their song, which is such a powerful and melodic and subtle song. And are we perhaps being entranced by their song and the words that we hear and we hear and we hear. And these backwards messages, because there's another one coming up, go into our mind and perhaps are embedded in the conscience and perhaps understood subliminally. And a new day will dawn for those who stand long and the forest will echo in laughter or with laughter. They come back to this theme of mocking traditional religion. Those who believed in the traditional things are laughable, literally, because those who stand long, they will find the true way. If there's a bustle in your hedgerow, and the song picks up at this point, if you remember, and becomes more rocky, don't be alarmed now. It's just a spring clean for the May Queen. So if something's happening, if something's really moving, don't be alarmed. And they talk about the May Queen. The May Queen is doing something, is getting active. The game is afoot. Well, the May Queen is the queen of witches, if you look back, actually, to pagan beliefs in England. And she's particularly linked to human sacrifice. So here they're using, in fact, mythology from England, mythology from Greece, and they're mixing it with the belief of those that are Satanists, because Satanists talk a lot about human sacrifice. So it's getting very explicit now. Yes, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Now you're saying to yourself, oh yes, I remember that lyric. I remember because words sometimes have two meanings. And I didn't really realize, but now it's maybe coming together. So there's still time, they're talking to their audience, to change your beliefs. You can still change the road you're on. You can come and you can see this new way. You can follow this new occult way. And in this particular verse, there's the second backward masking message, and I invite you to go, you know, and take the time to listen to it. And it says, to my sweet Satan, then it says 666, 666 from Revelations, you know, is the number of the beasts, which represents Satan on earth. So here there's no more messing around. They're talking very explicitly, but it's interesting because they don't come out and say things in an obvious way. They mask them, they hide them, they put hidden messages. They put occult symbolism, and you don't know what it means. You think it looks kind of cool, 
But then when you go and check it out, it's more sinister than cool. Your head is humming and it won't go, in case you don't know. The piper is calling you to join him. Satan is calling you very specifically to join him. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know your stairway lies on the whispering wind? Well, the whispering wind is the ways of magic. It is the beguiling, enchanting, mesmerizing, hypnotic ways of magic. You hear a whispering like the sirens in ancient Greece that would beguile the mariners and make their boats crash onto rocks. You hear this murmuring and this whispering, but you can't quite make out what they're saying. But now it's becoming clear. And as we all wind down down the road, our shadows taller than our soul. So here they're stating very explicitly that the forces of evil are going to outpower the forces of good in the apocalyptic con con um, confrontation that's going to happen at the second coming, that the forces of evil, i.e. Satan, this is what Satanists believe, are going to overpower God. There walks the lady we all know. She's already been identified as the queen of witches who shines white light and wants to show. Shining white light is a form of illuminating flashing light that happens during black magic ceremonies. And it means that the person is possessed of a powerful spirit. So the queen of witches has a very powerful white light. And you've seen this in films, Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings and everything. It's a depiction of a spiritual or an occult force emanating from somebody. And she, so she wants to show you, she wants to show you the way. How everything still turns to gold. This goes back to the Middle Ages. Satanists believed in alchemy, that you could take just vulgar metals and turn them into gold through magic. And if you listen very hard, the tune will come to you at last. When we are all one and one is all, to be a rock and not to roll. Here I can't go into all the details, but it's a quite a clever play on words. The rock, as you know, is uh, a way that people call it Jesus. Jesus is the rock, something which will not falter, which will always be there. Satanists believe, in fact, that Satan is the rock and the real power and something that you can trust. And here they, there's a play on words, a rock and not to roll, where they're playing rock and roll. So they're saying the power of Satan, once in stored, with thanks to people like them who are spreading the messages, that you can count on it as an absolute rock, as something certain. And through their rock and roll, through their hidden messages, and through their insidious way of presenting it in this very indirect way, and basically beguiling and fooling the public, they have managed to plant a seed of something very sinister in the minds of hundreds of thousands or perhaps millions of people. Thank you for watching.